job. Well, any uh, comic book fans out there? Anyone read comic books or used to read comic books? Yeah? Awesome. The old Marvel uh, comic book characters are coming back. They're actually all the rage these days with film studios and, and people who want to go pay to see a movie. And if you watched the Super Bowl last week, then you might have seen the little uh, clip that they released uh, for the third installment of Iron Man that's coming out. In the last 10 years, actually, we've had the X-Men trilogy, four Spider-Man movies, Iron Man 1 and 2, Captain America, The Incredible Hulk, The Green Lantern, Thor, The Avengers, and sometime later this year, Wolverine. But here is a superhero that you probably haven't met. Perhaps because he's a villain rather than a hero. Meet Radioactive Man first written into the Avengers comics in 1963. His ambition, you might well have already guessed. He plans on taking over the world. Radioactive Man is a bit like the Incredible Hulk and the Spider-Man in that it was exposure to something radioactive that gave him his superpowers. But unlike the other two, Radioactive Man actually glows. In fact, one look at Radioactive Man, and there's probably no doubt in your mind that he's different. So different that if you were to meet him in the gym between services for the coffee hour, you might just be curious enough to walk up to him and start a conversation and ask him why he's glowing green. On the other hand, you might be equally likely to flee the building and call 911. What would it be like if Christians were like radioactive man? And I don't mean what would it be like if we, had, uh, if we were supervillains with destructive powers. I mean, what would it be like if people could tell that we were followers of Jesus just as easily as we can tell that radioactive man is glowing green? What if we were radioactive Christians? Well, Peter, John, and James caught a small glimpse of that vision when they followed Jesus up to the top of a mountain to pray. And if you'll turn with me in your Bibles to page 1609, we're reading from the Gospel of Luke in the ninth chapter, starting with verse 28. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy. Sound familiar? But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He obviously didn't know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at that time what they had seen. This is the word of God for us today, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, what exactly was it that made Jesus glow as bright as a flash of lightning? And what about Moses before him, who also came down from a mountain, glowing? Well, as usual, the disciples seemed to have a hard time grasping the meaning of this. So maybe we can do better. Let's start by looking at what did not make Jesus glow. 
I'm reasonably certain that Jesus did not glow because he was covered in radium-based paint. After all, the radioactive element radium was only recently discovered in 1898. You see, radium emits radioactive particles that ionize the air, and that's what makes radium appear to glow. The person who discovered radium, Marie Curie, supposedly kept a vial of concentrated radium in her bedroom as a nightlight. Yeah, gross, huh? Trying to copy the glow of Jesus by making ourselves glow with radium would be kind of like trying to make ourselves happy by relentlessly chasing after money, sex, power, or any of the other idols that we worship. Filling our hearts with anything other than God poisons us and eventually kills us, just as surely as the so-called radium girls were poisoned in their, this real-life story, glow-in-the-dark tragedy. Between 1917 and 1929, hundreds of young women were employed applying radium-activated paint to watches, aircraft controls, clocks, and compass faces in factories in Illinois, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Long Island. Painting an average of 250 dials per day and getting about a penny and a half per dial, the women at Radium Dials Ottawa, Illinois plant could earn about $18 a week. And that compared to the $5 they would have most likely earned in another kind of production plant. Working with a mixture of glue, water, and radium powder, the dial painters used camel's hair brushes to apply the glowing paint to racks of dials. For fun, the young women would sometimes paint their fingernails and their teeth with the glowing mixture and then turn off the lights in the factory. At times, with the factories often full of radium dust, it was reported that the women's skin and hair sometimes glowed by the time they left work. One worker noted that when she blew her nose, her handkerchief glowed in the dark. Tracing the tiny numbers on watches and compasses required precision brush strokes. And the women were encouraged by their supervisors to use their lips to make a fine point on their brushes. Reassuring them that the glowing substance in the paint was not dangerous, women later quoted their bosses telling them, don't worry if you swallow some radium. It'll make your cheeks rosy. Over time, as you might expect, the factory workers absorbed substantial amounts of radium into their bodies. And by the early 1920s, the dial painters were falling ill with mysterious symptoms. Many developed problems with their teeth, and their jawbones appeared to be disintegrating. They frequently suffered from severe anemia and debilitating joint pain as well. And eventually they died of, radi of radiation poisoning. Marie Curie herself, the discoverer of radium, died in an early age from aplastic anemia, the result of most likely her long-term radiation exposure. Well, we've always looked for a quick fix to get that inner glow in our lives. And in the early 20th century, radium-based products were sold as the quick ticket to radiant health and beauty. Doramad toothpaste was sold with the promise that radioactive radiation increases the defenses of the teeth and gums. Cells are loaded with new life energy. It gently polishes the dental enamel and turns it white and shiny. If you think about it, we're still being sold a similar lie today, aren't we? That perfectly bleached white teeth are the key to landing the perfect job or to making friends. In the 1920s and 30s, drinking water was dispensed from special ceramic jugs that had been laced with radium to create healthful radioactive water as nature's way to health. That kind of reminded me when I, when I heard that about the discovery, oh, a year or two ago, that all that healthy water we've been drinking out of plastic bottles has actually been poisoning us with the BHP that's been leaching out of the plastic and into the water. 
Well, around the same time that radioactive drinking water was being sold, a German company, Burke and Braun, added radium to chocolate bars. And they claimed that it gave the chocolate rejuvenating powers. Hmm. Has anybody else heard the hype about dark chocolate over the past years? How eating a little dark chocolate every day is going to make us live forever? And then there was the company that sold radium-laced suppositories that promised men, yes, that is gross, that promised men that they could be transformed from weak, discouraged men into strong, heroic males that would bubble over with joyful vitality. <laughs> I'll bet. Now, what does that sound like in today's market of quick fixes, huh? Maybe Viagra, Old Spice, and Grecian formula for men all wrapped up into one product. Quick fixes like radium are not at all what made Moses and Jesus glow. In fact, there is absolutely nothing that we can buy, eat, or wear that will transform us into radioactive Christians. Actually, Moses and Jesus glowed because they had face-to-face, life-transforming encounters with God's holiness. God's holy love is radioactive with a half-life of eternity, and it's divinely contagious. Did you know that spending time with God in conversation is very dangerous? Because it's almost impossible to avoid being transformed by God's Spirit from the inside out. I know that as a fact because I have seen it happen over and over and over again in this church and in other churches. There are radioactive Christians in our midst, even right here in this sanctuary today. And they're glowing with their own particular color of Christ's grace in their lives. Probably the very first radioactive Christian that I remember noticing was a small, unassuming man who was greeting at the front door on a fall Sunday morning in 1993 at Pilgrim United Methodist Church. His name was Creed Wood, and I, I only remembered that because I Facebook messaged uh, the pastor from that church and asked to have a little help remembering what his name was. And I, I didn't remember his name the next day. I, the next Sunday I came back to the church either, but guess what? Creed remembered my name and my wife's name and the names of my two small, at that time, small children. I know Creed remembered us because the very next Sunday he was there again at the door and he called us by name again. Many of you have had a similar experience either at this church or at another church. But Creed was special. He had every reason to be bitter and angry and preoccupied with his own life. You see, he and his wife were caring for their adult daughter who had been tragically and permanently brain damaged in a car accident. And yet there he was at the front door, joyfully and caringly sharing God's love. He was glowing with God's love for strangers. He was a radioactive Christian. And his welcome at the front door of the church was a part of a chain reaction that led to my own Christian conversion and eventually my call to ordain ministry. Some of the saints of this church have been radioactive Christians. Some of you uh, might have thought of Jack Johnson as I was telling the story of Creed Woods. Jack was a legendary usher here whose caring attention charged everyone around him with holy love. And then there was Howard Graves. Howard gave off a different kind of radioactive love. Howard was so convinced of the life-changing love of Jesus Christ that wherever he went, he could not help but give a testimony of God's goodness. I thank God when I remember those radioactive saints of this church who've gone on before us to be with the Lord. The good news is this. There are still radioactive Christians among us today in this very church. And they have superpowers of love. Not because they're especially smart or strong, 
or good looking, they were because they eat the right foods, or they read the right books, or because they've been exposed to radium. Their superpowers come from the radioactive love of God. And they get their powers by spending time in God's presence every day. It's the basic stuff, folks. Simple prayer, reading the Bible, holy conversation with your brothers and your sisters, worship, serving our neighbors. Those are the things that put us in touch with the radioactive spirit of God. Now, who are these radioactive Christians in our midst? Fortunately, they're not wearing masks to protect their identities. There are people like Sherry Westdorf, who week after week is sitting at a little table outside the gym on Wednesday night, laughing and sharing the good news with people as they're coming to have their Wednesday night dinners. There are people like Greg Westdorf, who's on the other side of the door, making sure that there's tables and chairs to sit at after they get done talking to Sherry. There are people like Walt and Clarice Arnold, who faithfully rain and snow uh, and sunshine are out there week after week changing that church sign on the street, making sure that we share the good news with our neighbors. There are people like Mary Ward, who, if you know Mary, travels around the building sharing a message of welcome and love like a bee pollinating flowers. They're all around us, actually. Radioactive Christians glowing with the love of God, glowing from the inside out. And if you'd only open your eyes and start looking around, I think you'll begin to see them. Or maybe you're not a radioactive Christian, or maybe today, especially, you don't feel like a radioactive Christian. But I hope at least you're a wannabe radioactive Christian. Aren't you tired of trying to carry your burdens all by yourself? Aren't you tired of trying to fill that hole in your heart with all the cheap junk that this world has to sell, only to find that you need another fix as soon as that wears off or it breaks or it gets old? Aren't you tired of being so fixated on yourself and your own problems that you wouldn't recognize Jesus himself if he walked up to you on the street in flowing white robes and served you communion? Aren't you just plain tired? There is a kind of radiation that loads up our cells with a new life energy. It gently polishes our souls and turns them pure and shiny. It's healthful and rejuvenating. There is a kind of radioactive power that can transform all of us from weak, discouraged people into strong, loving people who will bubble over with joyous vitality and make us glow. You can't buy that online. You can't go to Best Buy. But you can get it for free wherever two or three have gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus has already paid the cost for you. So if you're tired today and ready for something better, I invite you to join your hearts with mine right now as we go to the Lord of life in prayer. O oh, holy God, we confess that we have tried it all. We have tried, we have tried to create our own happiness, our own sense of success. We have reached out to everything under the sun, and we are tired and worn out. And we admit that we need you, and so we pray, come Holy Spirit, come and fill our lives. Make us glow from the inside out, and Lord, where our faith is not enough, give us a stronger faith that we might receive your Spirit with joy. Lord, we pray that we might be more fully uh, your people today, your children. And we turn our lives over to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.